Hello everyone and welcome back to Closets Gaming. Today we are going to take a look at Elgotica Iteration 1. This beautiful looking educational puzzle game takes on the difficult subject of trying to learn the basics of programming to people who are yet untouched by this subject that is very uninviting to many in a more inviting way. It is available on Steam for 9 euros and 99 cents or your regional equivalent. So programming. This is a subject many of gamers probably thought about learning themselves. But it is also true that programming can feel almost impossible to get into without spending immeasurable amounts of time learning it. And here comes Elgotiga, a game by a Russian developer called Alexander Khodoshavin, who is attempting to create a game that not only teaches you the basics of programming through its gameplay, but is also fun at the same time. The thing I think I should start with is the way the game is controlled. And you may have guessed, based on the fact that this is a game that is here to teach you about programming, it is done through typing. More specifically, by typing out the exact commands you want your character to perform. The thing I found very nice that that even ties into the programming is that over time, you will get keyboard shortcuts that input a command for you, so you don't need to type in the whole command, you just push the shortcut. But just randomly putting in commands won't do it. You need to have the commands there in a the correct order. Otherwise your character will either fall off its designated path, get stuck or get deleted from the world by an enemy. But don't worry, if Loney gets deleted, there is always a backup he can be reloaded from. And additionally, you can use only a certain number of commands in each level, as you only get a certain number of memory cells that each can contain a single command. There are currently 15 commands available in game, ranging from the basic forward and backward used for, for movement, through attack and activate that allow you to kill enemies and activate objects in the levels respectively, up to true and false commands that are used to solve puzzles inside a puzzle level. I know, puzzle inception. These commands aren't introduced to you all at once, thank god, but instead you will find them scattered throughout the levels. Later on, you will get even to execute commands with arguments that are written inside parentheses right after the command itself. For instance, forward, open parentheses 1, close parentheses will make Loni go forward two times in a row, or jump, open parentheses, some number, close parentheses will determine the strength of Loni's jump. The puzzles that you find inside the individual levels use strict computer logic, like for instance, if there is an X exclamation mark 5, it means X is not 5. Or X equals equals 5 means that X is 5. Then we have X greater than 3 ampersand X less than 7 mean that X is both greater than 3 and smaller than 7, so it can be any of the numbers 4, 5 or 6. And the last possible type of logic is X equals equals 5 vertical line X equals equals 4 meaning that x can be either of the two, so 5 or 4. Essentially exclamation marks means not, double equals means is, ampersands is and, and the vertical line means or. Though the exclamations given in game could be a bit more comprehensive, I do find it a bit too hard to understand at times. Still on the topic of puzzles inside individual levels, these can be divided into two categories. First type needs you to solve essentially a math problem using the logic mentioned previously, to either activate something in game or open a chest that has additional commands for you. The second type of puzzles actually open up a path for you towards the end of the level. This is run through either parts of the level being blocked off or by some things in the level having a need to be moved. And again, you need to use logic presented earlier to solve the puzzles. Then we have the functions mechanic. Functions are essentially sequences of commands that can be used repeatedly without the need to use memory cells. Every time there is a sequence of commands used in a level repeatedly, it is a good idea to use these functions. And lastly, there is Lonely's memory itself. In here you can store items that you get from notes and even put items inside the notes itself if you need that to progress through the level. Apart from the levels themselves, there is a zone called free memory in which you can move freely using either the VASDA or the cursor keys. This allows you to access different parts of the world or change your hat. Oh, I almost forgot to mention this. There are hats in game, and these don't serve any other function than just to look nice. Obviously, this developer has played his share of Team Fortress 2. 
Okay, that's pretty much all the mechanics. Now let's talk about what I like about them and what I don't like about them and we will divide this into two parts. The first part will be dealing with the actual gameplay, whether it is fun and the second one will try to take a look at the educational portion of the game. For this part I have used my girlfriend who is currently attending university to become a teacher. Though not for programming, but I ask her to think whether she thinks the concepts are explained well so that even children could understand them. So let's start with the first part. And yeah, I think the game is done well and it's really fun. I will gladly admit I'm probably one of the stupidest players when it comes to solving in-game puzzles, so I can easily say how much accomplishment I have felt whenever I finally managed to understand what to do in one of the levels I got stuck in. And believe me, I got stuck really often, especially when a new mechanic was given to me for the first time. When I first started playing, I was really scared that I will be forced to type in each of the commands every single time, and I thought that that will be a major flaw that I will have to point out. But luckily, I got proven wrong at the moment when the keyboard shortcuts got introduced into the game. I think the shortcuts could be given to you at the moment you discover a new command, instead of having to find it later on in the levels. Because this means you will still have to be typing pieces of the code, even after using it already for a decent amount of time. Secondly, I don't really think parts of the more challenging mechanics are explained rather well. Especially the inventory mechanic with the variables was really confusing to me for a long time. More explanation and more examples should probably in game if it wants you to learn from it and not just trying out stuff blindly until you get it right. Now on to the educational part. I've shown the game to my girlfriend who studies university to become a teacher. More specifically, I've shown her all the tutorials and how the more complex mechanics work. When it came to the tutorials, she thought they were done pretty well that they would work very well for teaching the basics of programming logic. What she meant more specifically is the fact that children sometimes might even have an issue with spatial thinking and sequencing orders, and the fact that this game introduces you to these things very naturally and gradually could help them understand these subjects much better. The fact the game has a story even inside its tutorials only makes this better, as children very much need to have their attention grabbed from the very start. Otherwise they won't get into it and will get bored and thus quit quickly. But then are the more complex mechanics. These have potentially two big issues. First, the thing concerning the puzzles inside the levels. Here the game could run into an issue where some of the younger children who have been able to get through the levels that didn't need them before without that much of an issue could be completely baffled because they are yet to learn about some of the concepts needed to understand these puzzles in school. The second problem could arise with the concept of functions and the inventory, where the children would probably need a bit more explanation, maybe even help from an adult, until they would completely grasp the concept. If the game wants to explain this sort of concept to the children without the need for supervision, the game should probably be more graphic in its explanations, something along the lines of arrows directly pointing to what you need to click, or a short animation that would show the process exactly. But altogether, she found the game to be an interesting tool that could add something new to the teaching process, as the colorful world and the story would immediately grab the children's attention and then it would gradually show them how to think inside this very strictly logical world. So to sum it up, gameplay wise, Algodiga is pretty amazing. It works well as a puzzle game, really making you think about how to solve each level. Though you can brute force your way through if you really want to, it is usually a better idea to stop, think and then try to execute your plan. And if there ever is a flaw in it, just keep track of where it happened and fix it from that point. As a piece of educational software, it is probably one of the best attempts to create a game that teaches you the basics of programming and computer logic, though a lot more explanations and examples are needed. If the developer wants this to see it as an educational software, I highly recommend he adds this in a patch. Okay, that's it about the mechanics. Man, that was harder to write up than I thought it would be. So, it's time to look at the things that create the game's atmosphere, and as usual, we will start with the story. The game starts with a tutorial, where you are being taught the basics of programming by the creator of this world, 
and you are controlling Loni, a player character who is controlled by simple commands. Once you finish the tutorial, Loni will actually abduct you and take you into the land of Agodiga, a world created from scraps of a fantasy world where the programs live their own lives without the influence of the developers. You are put on a journey to save the world by controlling Loni, gathering data that includes new commands allowing you to lose Loni to his full potential. Nothing more can really be said without spoiling the story itself, but suffice it to say, I was pleasantly surprised on how flesh out the story was, and it is pretty engaging and when combined with the graphics, it can and it will actually grab your attention, making you want to help the inhabitants of this computer based realm. Graphically, as you can see from the footage, the game is simply amazing. Seriously, especially if you take into consideration that the game has been created by a single developer in the Unity engine. This game is a perfect example that Unity is a good engine if you put it into good hands. The way I would describe the style of the graphics is cute. And that is just an awesome style for a game that is so very hard in its core mechanics because it takes a bit of the pressure off through creating a much less imposing atmosphere. And if there ever was a game that needed such a cute atmosphere, it certainly is Elgadiga. The graphics are colorful, cheerful, and even though most of the elements on screen don't move, the fact that they use such bright colors makes them feel very lively. And even though the textures don't use super high resolutions, the way that they are presented in makes them feel very smooth and high quality. A small but that much more appreciated touch is that the graphics actually change with the time of day. So at night, everything will be a bit darker and during the day, the background will be that much more bright. This all combined with the very good usage of light combines together in a such a friendly way that made me feel so warm inside, almost the same way Christmas does for children. Music wise, the game uses a few simple tracks that I didn't find really that amazing. Though they were okay at serving their purpose, they were sort of cheerful and happy. Where the game actually shines are the sound effects. Each of them sounds very much computer related and only intensifies the feeling of being inside a computer realm. When it comes to the game's performance, I was pleasantly surprised. The frame rate was really nice and steady, no stuttering and the only bug I encountered was a deformed piece of text in the free memory zone. But that didn't impact the gameplay at all. Though if you read through the forums on Steam, you'll find a mention of FPS issues when running in really high definition. Though it seems this isn't a Unity bug, not a game specific bug. So in conclusion, for 10 euros this is a pretty amazing puzzle game. And even if you buy it only for its value as a game, it is a good option. And if you consider the fact that you will be learning at the same time, the value deal only goes up. The production of Elgadiga is simply amazing, especially considering a single developer is creating it and I think he should be highly praised for it and well supported. So if you're a fan of puzzle games or you want to learn a bit about computer logic and programming, go and buy this game right now. Well, that's it for today guys, hope you liked the review and if you did, please consider liking it, subscribing to my channel for more gaming reviews or comment if you have something you would like to add. And if you didn't like the video, well, dislike it. See you all next time with more gaming content.